Welcome back to the Blizzard of 78 Winter Special. WBZ meteorologist Pamela Gardner joining me now. And Pamela, the question on many people's minds, could the Blizzard of 78 actually happen again? Well, yes and no. So sure, we've had comparable storms in terms of snowfall. And just a few weeks ago, we had record high tides during the blizzard. But we've come a long way in 40 years in terms of preparedness and technology and learned some valuable lessons along the way. Paralyzing, isolating, the blizzard of 78. Still our benchmark storm for New England. I lived in Newburyport, Massachusetts when the blizzard of 78 hit. And my father, who actually worked in Boston, was stuck on the road uh, trying to get home. Dr. Flynn describes his memories, like many, from 40 years ago. Today, he heads the Global Resilience Institute at Northeastern University, specializing in disaster assessment and recovery. A big element of being prepared is being able to understand risk and how it will play out on things that you value. We have better forecasting tools now that allows us to know with a little more precision when something will hit. 40 years ago, we had one computer model. Today, there are dozens. Currently, the combined processing power of National Weather Service supercomputer is 5.78 petaflops, which is more than 10,000 times faster than the average desktop computer. And the data going into those computers comes from a wide variety of sources, from satellites, weather balloons, buoys, radar, to airplanes and ships. The communication has also vastly improved, and schools and businesses have adapted to the changing times. First of all, I'm watching the TV stations, probably WBC a lot. Marilyn Reed at Willow Hill School receives the information and takes action. One new concept is helping her decision-making process. Having the virtual day, knowing that there's no separation of school, I think is going to make the decision a lot easier. I am not going to be staying up into the middle of the night trying to decide whether we're going to have school tomorrow. All the students do have access to the technology at home. One of the things with the virtual learning days is, depending on the storm, you lose power. So we have hard copies that we distribute to the students. What can we do before the storm shows up to kind of lower our exposure? So something that now has almost become commonplace for us is to clear the roads in advance of a big snowstorm. That's so valuable not just to make things safer for people, that they won't be stranded. That's a good thing. But it is because we can clear the roads that much more quickly and get us all back to work uh, that much uh, more rapidly. Blizzards like that in 1978 will continue to happen. Records are meant to be broken, but it is our ability to predict, prepare, and recover that will make all the difference going forward. And if there's anybody who can speak to how far we've come in the last 40 years, it's our own Barry Burbank. That's right, Pamela. This isn't only the 40th anniversary of the infamous blizzard. It is also Barry's 40th year here at WBZ. Are you serious? If serious, man. Time flies. You wouldn't be kidding fun. me, would you? Of course not. Barry started just a few <laughs> weeks after the blizzard, and fair to say, you've seen a couple of snowstorms since then. Mm, yeah, maybe. One or two. One or two. <laughs> yeah. But through all the storms and all the changes in TV, weather casting, nothing's quite measured up to that original blockbuster storm. Let's go to the weather map and see the Barry region. joined BZ in March of 1978, but just weeks earlier was forecasting up in Portland, Maine, and couldn't believe what he was seeing. I started looking at this and saying, can this possibly happen? Could we have a storm of this magnitude? Is this computer model gone crazy or nuts? I was concerned about how they were gonna handle it down here because it looked like it was gonna be much more severe. Down here was his soon to be partner in forecasting, longtime BZ meteorologist, Bruce Schwegler. We got a major flooding potential. You were the guy all those hours. You go outside at all tonight, you've gotta to be out of your gourd. Was it nonstop for you? It went for days and days and I was very tired by the time I got done. <laughs> and uh, it was exciting, and there was a lot to do. We're getting closer to the center of the low. Essentially every hour or so, I was on the air, day and night and <laughs> for five days. Now one of the problems we're having with day after day being stuck here is our outfits are getting a little gamey. <laughs> I did bring in a pair of underwear and a, and a t-shirt, and everything else was the same, right? Don Kent was here at the beginning of the storm. Correct. I was looking at it with Don in the morning, and Don was going for 6 to 12 inches. By the time I got into the afternoon and evening, I said, oh, Jesus, double it. And do 20 inches of snow. And that's exactly how it started going up. It was a little late in starting, so people went to work on that Monday morning. All of a sudden, it was a wall of snow that came bang. Everybody got let out of work, so that's where the problems happened. All the roads around here they were just shut down. 
I mean, they were just, the, the cars were like this with snow. They were going nowhere. Route 128 is totally closed. And it took, God, two, three days for them to get out of there. It had a long lasting impact on the New England psyche. It established a platform of people being panicking for storms. Yep. People just, as soon as they hear a snow, right. they're, they're off right. to the and market. Then, and then everybody's going, Jesus, what happened to all of bread? It's all gone. <laughs> Bruce, why do you think we're still talking about this 40 years later? It was a big deal because nothing like it ever occurred before and after. That is it. Whammo. It's this one, and then it's all the other ones. Of course, Barry has seen a lot of other storms in his 40 years since. I can remember some big storms that happened, like the April Fool's blizzard of 1997. A few in 2005. We've had, of course, 2015. Everybody will remember that for all the snow we had in 30 days. And when it comes to TV coverage, he's seen a lot of things change, too. When I first started here, we just had two maps, and they were actual real maps in the studio. We almost needed a step ladder to get up and wash them off. Now we have a tremendous amount of computer guidance to help us with the forecasting. And now, with social media, I mean, we're constantly on it all the time. But through it all, that big blizzard at the outset of his BZ career has always stayed top of mind. This had so many factors to it, so many ingredients to make it the storm of the century. It's just nuts. It was, the whole thing was crazy. And the real spirit of New England, to me, came out. You had people opening up their homes to other people. Yep. Everybody became a friend to everybody else. You're absolutely correct. Boy, it was great catching up with Bruce. He was here for 33 years at WBZ, and the blizzard of 78 was his most memorable storm. You see some of the clips, and yeah. just in the moment, you could tell that he knew that that was something mm -hmm. that you might not see again. Right. Unbelievable. Great yeah. to see you guys chatting, and yes. a couple legends of weather here in New England. And be sure to join us in early March as we celebrate Barry's incredible 40 years here at WBZ. And when we return, the entire WBZ weather team comes together for our Winter Weather Roundtable Part 2. But as we go to break, look back at one of the more unique blizzard memories, thousands left stranded after the bean pot. It's going to be a new story all night as fans spend the night at the garden. How they're going to get home is the question. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm getting home on Southern Comfort and 7-Up. How are you all getting home tonight? We don't know. No. <laughs> I'm staying here all night. We have a car here. It's parked in the parking lot next door. If we can't get home, we'll stay here and have a few beers till the bars close at 2. Hopefully I'll find some place in town to stay. Uh, not at the garden. No way at the garden. 100 people did stay at the garden. Many just roamed the halls.